Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are talking about Olivia Palermo Beauty. So this brand launched last year. I didn't pick anything up from the first couple of launches, but I couldn't resist the latest eyeshadow palette in Regalia. So first of all, the packaging on all of her products is absolutely stunning. It is designed based off of a bracelet that she has and apparently wears frequently. You can see that the lipstick case here, you have the Olivia Palermo logo here. You can see that you kind of have this um, like a concave kind of shape here to it. And you've got this basket weave pattern. It is magnetic and it's just, it's stunning. So the top, although you have the logo in there, it is a mirror finish. So you can kind of check your lips a little bit in there. And I picked up the shade Runway Rouge. So you can see we've got Olivia Palermo right there along it. And the lipstick is 3.5 grams or 0.12 ounces. And there's a one year shelf life after opening. And this is made in Canada. So, well, let's put the lipstick here. So here is one layer and you can see that it looks a little bit more of like a fuchsia red with one layer. So it's, it's a blue based red, but then if we go back and forth, you can see it gets a little bit deeper. It's definitely still going to have some of those like fuchsia undertones, but it's a really pretty deep blue based red. And it's what I have on my lips right now. Now the eyeshadow palette is seven grams and it is also made in Canada. You have a full size mirror here. This is also magnetic. You've got the Olivia Palermo name here, basket weave all over the top and over the majority of the bottom as well. You can see you do have little feet here to kind of allow this to sit up on a surface. And then this is the actual palette. There is just so much attention to detail with these products. So uh, just like the lipstick, this has a one year shelf life after opening. And you can kind of see a little bit of the depths of color from where my brushes have touched this. I do have three eye looks to share with you for this. And let's start off with some swatches. So first we have a matte brown shade and all of her shadows are incredibly creamy. So you've got this rich brown. It's got a little bit of a reddish tone to it. So it's, it's a little bit warmer versus cooler, but it's, it's neutral leaning warm. So it's closer to neutral in the spectrum than it is to a warm brown, but there are definitely gonna be those warmer reddish golden tones in there. And then we have this second shade here is kind of like a, it's like a peachy copper. So it's like that bright brassy copper that you get. Look at that, really beautiful very rich and vibrant. And then we have a deep emerald green. Again, all of these are super creamy. And look at this green when you kind of feather it out. A lot of rich greens like this have a black base or a really deep gray base, but you can see that you actually have a lot of true green color here. So even when you blend it out, it's not like fading to black. Next up, we have this bronzy shade here. And can see that this has a rich brown base with a little bit of bronze in there. Really, really beautiful. And next is this rich amethyst purple. Look at that. Now I do want to know how this one kind of fades out. It's not as true of a purple as the green is as true of a green. So it's not like it's fading to black or gray, but you can see that it gets like kind of this warmer rusty tone here. And that's something that we are gonna talk about in a little bit. And then the last shade here is a pewtered silver. You can see it is incredibly shimmery here. Look at that. So this is like a deep pewter silver with a ton of sparkle. So these four shades here are all considered shimmers. This is more of a satin metallic and a matte. 
Briefly, let's go through the names of these shades. So this deep brown is actually called Smoky Quartz. Then we have Rose Gold, Malachite, Antique Diamante, Amethyst, and Diamond Dust. And again, these last four are Shimmer. This is a Satin, and this is a Matte. All of the shadows are incredibly creamy and very richly pigmented. So if you don't want this level of pigmentation, you need to make sure you only use a little bit and kind of spread it out. But it's very easy to get a rich, bold look. And these jewel tones really kind of bring back a little bit of that. To me, it reminds me of some of the like glamour days of Hollywood and so forth. And I just think they are absolutely stunning colors and the formula is really nice. So I'm very impressed with the formula. So let's take a look at some comparisons. All right, so first we're gonna start with the lipstick. So the lipstick that I'm wearing in Runway Rouge is considered a matte. It is not a matte that completely dries down. This shade here is Lisa Eldridge Velvet Ribbon. Let's just build that up a little bit more. Velvet Ribbon is gonna have a bit of a stronger blue base. It's a little bit more pink as well. So this one's gonna be cooler in tone than Runway Rouge. Now, as I was saying, the Olivia Palermo, it feels very comfortable on the lips. It does not 100% dry down. So it's one of those like creamier mattes. We have the Dior 999. This is gonna be a warmer red. And this is the velvet finish that I'm looking at here. Givenchy, this is La Rouge Deep Velvet in Lantardy 36. So here it is, it's built up here. And this is going to be warmer as well. This is a pretty true, truly neutral red um, in comparison. So it's not as warm as the 999, not as cool as the Runway Rouge or the Lisa Eldridge. We also have a couple of the Guerlain Legendary Reds. This one here is number, this one is 1870 in the Satin Formula. So I'm just going to put that right here. And you can see it's going to be more berry toned. Um, than the Runway Rouge. We also have number 1925. This is in the Velvet form version. And this is going to be warmer in tone. That's this one here. And here's 1925 in the Satin. Let's just put that right there. You can see that they're not going to quite go with this. A few Chanel shades. This is number 99, Pirate. Put this right up top. So here's Pirate, and you can see that it's actually very close. This might be the closest one I have to it. Pirate is going to be a little bit cooler. There's a little bit more blue in it than Runway Rouge, but they're pretty close. The finish is different, though. Um, Pirate is a satin, whereas this is a matte, and although it's a creamy matte, it still has a little bit more of that velvety appearance. We also have 147 Emblematique, and let's put that one right here. So here's Emblematique. You can see it's gonna be a little bit warmer in tone than Runway Rouge of Pirate. And then last up, we have 176 Independent. Let's, I guess we'll have to put this one over here. And you can see that this one's gonna be lighter in tone and it's actually a little bit more neutral. It's not quite as cool in tone as Runway Rouge. So as for the eyeshadows, the first thing that really came to my mind were Viseart shades because those are the shadows that I have that are really kind of rich in color. I don't have a ton of really rich ones. This one here is the Dark Mattes. So let's go ahead, let's see. So obviously the finish of these is gonna be different, but Let's just see how the colors compare. So let's put the purple here and here's the green. So the purple is definitely not as deep. It doesn't have as dark of a base as the Olivia Palermo. The green one, if you add something with like a little bit of a, a bluish green shimmer on top, I feel like you're getting kind of close there. Um, then, this one here is the Vizier Bijouette. And, you know, this purple is going to be too light. I did want to look at this green, though, here. And the green is not going to be matched on its own. Definitely too light. But let's see how that looks on top here. 
went to blue green. As for the brown, let's look at this brown mat though and see how this compares. Uh, the, they're pretty close. The Viseart's a little bit cooler. Um, I have to say the Viseart, they can be a little bit more sheer than these, than the Olivia Palermo as well. It's uh, the pigments in the Olivia Palermo are just a little bit more, um, a little bit more full force. Then we have the Viseart Petit Four in Peridot. I figure we could look at this deeper green and this bronzy shade here. So let's see, here's the green. Nope, too light. And here's that bronzy shade. Let's see, it's it's too light. And then this is the NARS Climax palette. If you have not tried this palette, this is incredible. This is really more of a burgundy shade, but we're going to go ahead and put this near the purple anyway, just to kind of see. It's a little bit more reddish in tone, but yeah, I feel like that's probably the closest shade I have to it. And let's go ahead and swatch a few of these others. So we're doing this one and the one below it. Let's go like this. So the brown is actually pretty close. This one here is lighter than the rose gold. And let's take a look at this green shade. I think, yeah, it's just, it's not quite like that one at all. And then let's take a look at the Byredo Nugget Palettes. So I thought we could look at this for the shade here. This is gonna be Byredo's cooler. Yeah, this is more black. Let's try the one right next to it. And squeeze that in here no I think that all of the shades in here because that was the warmest shade here in the middle these are all going to be too cool and then I wanted to look at this one this is the Sciomancer palette obviously these shades are going to be too bright but I figured let's just go ahead and swatch these four so you can kind of see what they look like tonally so green is eh, kind of close and this is going to be more orange than the rose gold but you can kind of get like a little bit of the general idea you can see that the green in the olivia palermo has more blue and then this is disco i wanted to see how this one compares to the rose gold shade all right so a little lighter, a little pinker. Let's try this middle shade here next to it as well. It's gonna be too yellow. And then let's take a look at this shade and this deeper green. So here's the green. It's got more brown in it. It's kind of like a cross between those two shades. This is the bronzy shade here. Those are kind of my closest matches. I went through all of my palettes. Those are the ones that really kind of spoke to me as being something similar potentially. So I don't have anything quite like the Olivia Palermo shadows. So I'm gonna show you the three looks that I have while I'm going over my thoughts on these items. Let's start with the lipstick. The lipstick I think is a nice lipstick. It's a nice matte lipstick. Again, it has a little bit more of a creamy matte texture when you put it on. It doesn't dry down 100%. It stays fairly comfortable on the lips, but I have to say I don't find it to be a hydrating matte lipstick. Um, you know, no problems wearing it or anything, but repeat it wear day after day does feel a, a touch drying to me. So it's not the most hydrating. If you have very dry lips, you might want something a little more hydrating or put some... So if you have very dry lips, you might want something a little more hydrating or put some lip balm on underneath it. But overall, I have to say I do like the lipstick and I would be interested in trying more of these. I think they are very nice and I love the way that they look, the actual appearance on the lips. It's really plush and velvety. Um, it doesn't look dry at all. So I really like the way the uh, lipsticks look and the way they feel while they're on. I think they're a very nice formula. 
Now, as for the eyeshadows, I really like these eyeshadows. I think they are very pigmented and there is a little bit of a learning curve for me to using them because they are so richly pigmented. And again, these are really deep shades. So, you know, I have to go in very cautiously with them. Um, so I have to use a little bit of a light hand unless I'm going for something really deep. These are best for like a deeper smoky eye. They are really very pigmented. And one of the things that's different between the formula of these shadows versus other shadows that are deep and richly pigmented is that when you pick up just a little bit of this product, you are still getting full force pigment. It's not like you pick up a little bit and it's a sheer wash of color. It's full force. So, you know, you can see in the demos when I go in with the brush, even when I tap some off on my cloth first, which by the way, I did every single time, you can still see how much pigment comes up and you know how it kind of blends out. So there's a little bit of a learning curve for me just to getting the right amount of product for the look I wanna create, but they are so creamy. Formula wise, I would have to say they are not quite as creamy as the Byredo Nugget Shadows, which have this like really interesting texture. I've talked about those a lot. I absolutely love that formula. I would say these are somewhere in between a, uh, you know, creamier powder shadow and the Byredo. They're kind of in the middle formula wise. So they're very rich, very creamy to the touch. They go on very strongly and they are gorgeous. Now, as for performance with these eyeshadows, they last all day. I have tested them with and without primers. And you know, I don't have to wear a primer with these. I did not have creasing even after 12 hours with these shadows. So they perform really well, no creasing, no fading. Now, as you may have noticed with the application, if I don't knock enough off of my brush, I did have some fallout with some of the applications. That's mostly due to the particular application method I use with the brush. These go on very nicely with your finger, but if you do have fallout, you know, just wipe it away with a brush. And then I usually just take my foundation brush and go over that again. But just something to know, they're come, you know, they're creamy, but they are a powder, so you can easily get a little bit of fallout. And overall, I have to say I'm very impressed. So I'm really happy with my purchase here, and I can't wait to see new products that come out with this line, and perhaps I'll try and test out some of the other ones that came out last year. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you've tried any of the Olivia Palermo products yet and what your thoughts are on this line. But I have to say, you can't beat the packaging. The packaging is stunning. It's definitely what luxury beauty packaging should look like. Absolutely love it. And I wasn't sure that the products would actually live up to that. And I think they do. You know, there's definitely a lot of thought put into these products, a lot of attention to detail, and I think everything is very finely done. So it's really nice. The one thing I did want to mention is the purple shade. As I mentioned in the beginning when we were swatching, how it kind of fades out to this like warmer, rusty color. That is the one shade that I have had a little issue with. At the end of the day, when I wear that kind of all over my lid, if I'm looking at it in dim lighting, it looks purple, but if I'm looking at it in brighter lighting, I see more of that rusty shade. It's almost like it changed color a little bit, and it's just that one purple, but again, it depends on the lighting. So it's a little odd, but just something to note that I think these like undertones just come out a little bit more in certain lighting and, you know, by the end of the day. So all the other shades stayed true to color, stayed very rich and had no like movement or anything. So thank you so much. I hope this was helpful. I'd love to know if you're interested in this palette. And again, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'll see you very soon. So have a great day and stay safe and healthy.